welcome. Welcome, uh, everyone. Welcome to our outdoor class today. Today we're going yeah, to I have... love the background. <laughs> today we're going to have a class outdoor. Now, I don't know what this reminds you of, but you can tell me. Uh, Sonia, you want to get started? What um, does the view remind you of? Well, um, I wish I could be there. It's obviously spring before noon and uh, people can get some time off work and enjoy this beautiful meadow and the forest nearby, sitting, admiring, smells are wonderful, I guess, pine trees around. I wish I could be there now. Thank you. Anyone else? This view is just so beautiful. It really uh, reminds me of um, well, when I was in school, we used to have uh, field trips and we used to like do the picnic style. Uh, and then, I mean, with now, like as an adult for me, like sitting at such places, and being alone with the animals, I think that's the best life for me. That I, that's what I can say. Without like, without any um, distractions like multimedia or something, just me and the nature. That's it. Mm -hmm. I love that, Pusha. What animals would you like to see there in the field? Uh, cats, dogs. Um, see, I mean, I am a huge animal lover, so I'm okay with any animal that I have. Like, I still remember when I went to Zambia, I had a python snake on my neck. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I had people with me. They were holding its neck and tail. I still have that photo on, like, I still have that in my favorites. Um, I was really scared that time, but then I still love that photo. So for me, any animals are okay. I mean, as long as they are free and they are like safe to do whatever they, they want to do. That's it. Yeah. Because over here, like in, in India, if you come to India, there are cows walking on the road. And then even the prime minister has to stop even if the, the cow is crossing the road. So it's like that. And then it's still unsafe for them, you know. And then uh, they end up eating plastic and everything. So it's very unhygienic. That's why. So just want, want every animal to be there, but safe and happy. That's it, yeah. Anyone else would like to share? Thank you, Pooja. I would like to see cows there. Cows, mm -hmm. maybe I guess sheep. there are some. Oh, there are? I don't see them. I, I, I don't see any, but look, uh, there is the gate to enter here. <laughs> <laughs> They must be keeping someone inside. Yes, they're, they're gonna. They're they're out. They're eating right now, but they'll be back. We'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be back. But um, yeah, that's um, using our imagination. Something that we don't do um, intentionally when we do mindfulness, but we do have such thoughts coming and going, and uh, we need to respect, as you mentioned, Pooja respect um, whatever thoughts, whatever animals pass by, thoughts pass by in the same way, respecting them and go coming back to the view, coming back to the breath, coming back to ourselves, to our bodies, so that we are grounded and we're able to see even farther and farther and clearer and clearer. That, that is the idea. I've been reading your journals. I'm sure Sonia has too. I don't know if you can read each other's journals. I think you can't. Uh, but your work has been amazing. The uh, Canva uh, work on mindfulness is so beautiful. It's a pleasure to look at the images that you're using as well as listen to your voice and the content, of course, is um, a pleasure to read. So I want to thank you for um, making my learning uh, meaningful and exciting as well. So we're all learning together, as they say. 
and um, and that's wonderful. It uh, it feels good. It feels good to be able to connect and learn together. Any comments or uh, questions that you may have uh, before we take a look at what's ahead in week four? Um, I just had one question. Yes. Um, this time I have been like really slow with the activities because I'm digesting every everything like mm -hmm. reflecting and then going ahead. Um, but um, I was doing this um, video uh, video challenges of mobile and videos, uh, the, the challenges part. Uh, so I'm done with my uh, presentation. But last two hours, I've been trying to upload on discussions. It's not, I mean, it's not even opening on my phone and neither on my laptop. So is there a problem from your end or from my end? I, I didn't understand that because, I mean, yeah. You're talking about uploading videos or just opening? Um, the uh, ad discussion column, that's not opening itself. And are, you you using, usually... are you using your phone or you tried both your phone and your, um, and your desktop, your computer? I tried my laptop and my phone. In my phone, the website is not opening itself. And on the laptop, uh, the website is being opened, but only the ad um, discussion is not being I cannot access to that. I don't know why. Yeah, it's it's probably your connection. Uh, it opens for me fine now. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. It's probably your connection. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need to clear the cache. You can write that down and take a look um, on Google. It's called clear cache. It happens uh, sometimes when we work a lot and we don't close our computers or, uh, you know, um, <laughs> or we use Chrome, which is draining, and it just sucks the life out of um, our devices, whether the phone. So you might want to give it a rest. But I like when you mention give it a rest, and just as we give ourselves, we need to give ourselves a rest. We need to give um, the computer a rest too, and turn it off a little bit, and not worry about you know reaching or, um, you know, keeping up or getting somewhere. And I think um, it's very important what you mentioned, Pooja, when you said, and, I, and that's what we did in week three, in fact. Week three was all about pausing, whether in the classroom, in our lives and everything. And, and you paused, which is exactly what you were supposed to do. I would not worry about working too quickly or I'm not managing. I would just sit down um, as we suggested with um, all your thoughts, all, you know, the challenges or frustrations, whatever, uh, the fact that I can't open it or whatever is going wrong, the minute it goes wrong, I would leave it. I would not, as the mindful way, okay, this is the mindful way of doing things. I would leave it, let it be, sit down with yourself, eyes open or eyes closed, and just be. You know, respect yourself too. Um, just as you respect other creatures, respect yourself and give yourself that time to just be with yourself, not try to reach, you know, I have to finish this or I have to do, you know, the more we, we push and we, it just happens that way. You know, nobody really understands why, but the more we push or we try to reach something and we're, you know, we're really, we, I got to get there. I got to get there. Uh, the more resistance we get, <laughs> things go wrong. You know, you, you want to reach, you want to do the work and all of a sudden you can't get in and you think, oh my gosh, everything's going wrong. That's the time to sit down and do a mindfulness practice, formal or informal, it doesn't matter. But that's what we that's what you work with in mindfulness. You work with uh, the mess, the challenges. Um, so I'm glad you're getting these opportunities and you should be too. You should say, wonderful. This is a chance to go sit down. Nothing's working. Open the book. And it'll be fine the next day or, you know, in a couple of hours. Right. Because, you know, um, the I mean, this time uh, for me, uh, the tiny habits uh, video was literally a life changer. And I ordered the book 
Yay! This came yesterday for me. Yay! And, like I can't wait to read this. Like I went and told my friends about this, and they're like, "We don't want to try. What is it about?" So it was so um, really encouraging to you know actually do stuff. It's like you're also multitasking, but also not multitasking in a major manner, right? So it's 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 amazing. I love I'm it. I'm so happy for you. That is wonderful. That's wonderful. I'm glad. All right. Anyone else have any comments? Thank you, Pooja. Thank you for sharing. And I'm glad about the book. Anyone else have any comments or questions? All right. So if you think of anything, feel free to stop me at any time. Let me know how you're doing. And um, if there's anything that you'd like to share with us. So what we're going to do is uh, we're here in uh, the course. This is what it looks like. It's kind of large. I don't know if you see it as large as I do. I hope it's not as big on your screen as it is on mine. It's simply huge. I'll have to make it smaller. Um, maybe I can make it smaller. It seems it's a bit too large. And it's taking a huge, let me go into making it smaller. <laughs> I think I exaggerated with the size. Sometimes I think that it's better for the recording if it's large, but that's not true. Okay, I hope this is better. I'm going to refresh. Yeah, it's a little better. A little. All right, so we're in week four, and week, week four, you're going to practice uh, different techniques and learn about the different techniques. If you could just share what techniques uh, come to mind when you think of both formal and informal mindfulness. Can you share some of the techniques that you picked up? If you can't think of a technique, just say it. I can't think of a technique right now. And then, anyone? All right, I'm not looking at the chat, so you'll have to unmute yourself and speak. It'll make it a lot easier. Uh, okay, you. there is, uh, there are some. Uh, yes, please. Can you read the them chat? to me? Sonia? Yoga, meditation, breathing practice. Pardon? Rafael, Rafaela says yoga. Yoga is a technique for mindfulness. Meditation. And Anita says breathing practice. Ah, breathing. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's take a look at um, techniques. Now, there are a few mindfulness techniques, uh, and you'll be practicing them this week. You'll have a chance to create, to use this Go Brunch room or a Go Brunch room. You can use Zoom, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, Jitsi. Uh, or any other virtual class that you have. I think you can also use Skype. Uh, you can use Facebook, right? No, maybe not. I'm not sure if you can use Facebook uh, this way. But what you're going to do, I think you can actually use Facebook in a private messenger chat. Uh, and you're going to practice on each other. You're going to do a five to 10 minute mindfulness class. Uh, so it will be a chance for you, just as uh, John Gabbett Zinn did, using the techniques. Is it clear what you're going to do? Just let me know. Because maybe it's not clear, even though the words are clear. But if you have any questions or clarity. There are no questions in okay. the chat. So you okay, so you create a class. All right? Mm-hmm. You mean and create a meeting, meet somebody from yes, our course. You're going and to practice. meet someone from our course. Now, if you can't mm -hmm. find somebody from our course, uh, which is possible because they're too busy or you're in different time zones or things don't work out, you can do it with a family member or in your class and you can record yourself. That would be exciting. You can do it uh, on your phone um, with your class. It'll be a chance to really try it with your students. Uh, if you'd like to take the plunge, you just record yourself as you do it um, so that we see you and hear you. 
if that's something that you'd like to try, it's an opportunity, I think. So here you will see the free resources and different techniques. Now, these are some of the techniques. There's a three minute breathing technique that you can learn about. Uh, it's a three minute, but you can make it shorter with Peter Morgan. There is a five minute breathing mindfulness awareness uh, research center from UCLA is providing this information. Five minute breathing, five minute another one, life happens, six minute breath awareness. There's a 10 minute breathing. You don't have to do the times, but just to get an idea. And there are a few techniques here. There's also uh, a few others here that are quite short that you might want to take a look at. There's one on the tension release meditation. And this is breathworks. I don't know if you're familiar with breathworks, but that's a technique to help your formal mindfulness. It's not yoga because we're not moving the body. Okay, Rafaela, the idea and the techniques is to sit or lie down, but it's preferably sitting that you sit and you practice certain kinds of breathing. Yoga also has breathing exercises, so you can use the yoga breathing exercises, but not the yoga asanas, not the postures. You don't move while you do mindfulness formal practice. There's never any movement. The idea is to stay still, not to move. Now there will be movement inside your head. You will be feeling sometimes that your body is moving too, but it's not, you are still. There's just that sensation of movement, but there's no physical movement. And there's also the three step breathing. This is also breath works, breathing space. There's the three minute mindfulness sounds. We played some sounds, so you got an idea. There's a cat for you. Uh, puja in nature so it's not so far-fetched it's it's very ironical because i had a cat exact <laughs> similar to her I can <laughs> on the um website as well exact same cat wow amazing <laughs> My mom and I were discussing about that we had to let her go so oh. she was like more no open to the environment um she was a street cat but it was the mm -hmm. exact same in the photo amazing and it was this cat looks pretty healthy it's, it's a kitten actually i think it's not maybe not and then there's the body scan the body scan is a technique it's a very important technique because um the bot when we our minds wonder and we get lots of thoughts the best way to come back gently remember we're always gentle uh we're uh, good to ourselves we're kind to ourselves, that kindness to yourself. Um, you may have to repeat it a few times for yourself. You have to be kind to yourself at all times. That means um, not fighting with people sometimes is being kind to yourself. You have to think always of yourself and then you'll be able to help others. So take care of yourself. The body scan you bring back, um, to the breath, but sometimes it's hard to get to the breath because we're so excited or something happened and uh, we're upset. So you bring yourself back to your body. You think of your body as the weight on the chair or your legs on the floor. So coming back to the body is easier than to get back to the breath. So first you come back to the body, you go through the body, you scan the body by going through the head, sensing the head, the neck, the shoulders, and so on, down to the legs. And then you can come back to the breath. But you'll notice that when you're in the body, the breath seems to appear too, because the breath is part of your body. It's your body breathing. That's what our bodies do. And remember, our thoughts are not physical. They're not really there. Okay, They're just passing thoughts they have they're intangible they're not solid even though we try to make them solid 
So the body scan, there are some four minute body scan. So you, you don't have to do all of these, you choose three. But notice this body scan, try it. This one's a bit longer, okay, the 15 minute body scan. And there you can see who organizes this, 20 minute body scan, 40, that's uh, for those who are experienced. The next technique is seated meditation. And it's also called sitting meditation. These are rather long. Okay, but there's a 10 minute wisdom meditation and compassionate breath. You don't have to do the whole thing. You can just start out, see what it's like. So don't let the time upset you or make you feel that you're going to have to be challenged. And then there's the mountain meditation. Uh, John Gabbardson mentioned the mountain feel when you're sitting that you're like a mountain strong, sturdy, ever present. And then um, there's the bells. I really like the bells. There's a five minute just bells, 10 minutes. We've done the bells and also up to 20 minutes. So the bells listening to sound, continuous sound and focusing on the sound. Now, there are different things you can focus on. These are techniques focusing on the sound around you, not sound that you create through uh, bells, but the sound that is there. And there's always sound. It's never completely silent. So listening to sounds, here it's bells. Okay, these are some of the techniques. You might find other techniques if you look them up mindfulness uh, techniques on how to reach formal mindfulness. The idea of these techniques is to be able to practice uh, formal mindfulness because formal mindfulness will lead you to having a mindful life, to living mindfully, but you need to go through the formal practice. Any questions about the techniques? Nelly, I would like to sum up the task. Yes, please. So, every one of us arranges a meeting with another person from our course, if not possible, from, from your family or friends, workplace. And then in the meeting, you try a technique and you record the meeting. You try three techniques. Oh, sorry. Yes, three mm -hmm. techniques. And you record in one meeting. Yes. Separately. Okay. Um, and notice the techniques here. These are some of the techniques that you can use. Mindfulness with background music. So before the meeting, uh, the participants in the meeting should uh, agree on the three techniques. No, no, no. Each one to... does whatever they want to. You okay. will do uh, three of yours, or if, you, mm -hmm. if they're too long, you might just do one. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. three, one to three. Um, okay. And then your partner will do another one. Okay. But if you're working in the classroom, for example, or uh, if you're working well in the classroom, you can't ask your students to do one for you but uh, you should be part of one as well okay it's give and take where you give and you also receive mm -hmm. if possible and then we upload that recording exactly okay mindfulness with background music guided mindfulness we've had all of these where someone speaks that's what you will be doing you will be doing guided mindfulness you will be guiding the person or people mm -hmm. who are there with you and there's mindfulness with body scan and mm -hmm. silent mindfulness practice and this you can do for a minute maybe two minutes you don't have it doesn't have to be long okay, okay. and what form will be that recording uploaded yes uh, i'll show yeah. that in a minute that was just a, okay. a summary mm -hmm. 
So you okay. know, go to that. Uh, the form, yes. there are uh, two forms and one diary. Uh, the first form is list your favorite techniques. Now we've gone, you list, you've gone through the techniques and you can choose three of your favorite ones. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go into Voki with map. In other words, you go into Voki. I'm going to do it now for you. I tried it before to make sure that it works and it does so that you can get at least 90 seconds. That's the most that you can get. You will see this page. Notice I'm in already, but if you want to know how I got in, let me log out. Okay, so you log in and that's my other account. And it's going to be fun. So you're going to write MAP map and MAP and then log in. This will give you a pro account so that you have 90 seconds instead of 30 or oh, 60, sorry. And then you go into create, click on create. If you've never done Vokey before, it's the talking avatar. You can use your voice or you can use text to speech. That's right. You can add the text and then speak it. You know, don't worry about the title yet. Well, that's a nice one. Um, don't worry about the title, but you do have to add, you can develop. There is a face, you can get different faces. Uh, you can get clothing, whatever you'd like. You can get a background. You can also upload your background if you like by clicking on this one. And then you can upload your background. You can change the color of the lips, the eyes, the skin. And then you go into, this is the most important part. It will not save unless you add voice. You click on the voice. And then as uh, Sanya said, you can add text, add your text here and the avatar will speak. Or you can add audio and this will be added. So, uh, hello, this is Nelly. And then you can choose what uh, it's recording me. Okay, so I'm going to stop. You can choose and then it's uploading. As you can see, you can choose what kind of accent you want. Processing. Yes, the female or male voice. Yeah, exactly. Or accent. What accent? Australian or there's a choice here. And then it'll play. I can't hear it, but maybe you can. It's not coming through. The sound is not coming through for some reason. But let me no. stop that. It didn't come through, but it's there. It's just that my screen sharing is not picking it up, which is fine. And then you simply audio must be audible. Oh, I didn't make it audible. Oh, it didn't. It didn't pick my microphone. It doesn't have my microphone. Um, and then you can also create an audio on your computer or phone, and then you can just upload it. This is fine on the phone. It comes out quite good. And then, um, let me just add text so that we have something here. Hello and welcome. Oops. And welcome to map. And then you can choose a voice here. So you've got English, Dave, Bridget, UK. Yeah. Did you understand her? I hardly understood her. She spoke really fast. Yeah. Okay, and then you save it. Now you give it a character name. We'll call it Nelly. Save. It'll take a few seconds, depending on the size, of course, and your connection. There we go, and then you can play it. Once you do that, you will go into uh, the link, copy link. Does everybody see that? Yeah, you, know? you can see it. Okay. Copy the link. 
Notice you can get the full length. I don't recommend it. Get the short, copy the URL, and then you can simply share it, which is what I'm going to do in the room. There we are. So you can see, everybody can see it. There I've added it. <laughs> so you've got it. Uh, let me go back to Voki. So that that's um, Voki and how you can get that going. Uh, let me go back. So that's, Nani, uh, yes, please. Uh, can you just repeat how we can use the MAP uh, account if we have a free account? I have a free account. No, you don't use your free account because then you can't, you will mm -hmm. not have um, 90 seconds. You'll have less and you'll have less features. Yes, and, and the list of avatars is much shorter. Yes, definitely, you can pick yes. From, yes. Mm -hmm. That's why, yeah. That's and how, how can we use uh, your uh, account? You simply go into Voki. There's mm -hmm. a link here, Voki.com. Okay. And on your phone, you can install it. And then for the user, you use MAP. And for okay. the password, you use MAP. Uh, again, MAP. MAP, okay. yeah. MAP. It is simple. Easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, so that yes. everybody remembers it, but, even me. Thank you. Uh, because I have a free account, I know. I have used it, but only the free account. You could ask your school, you know, if it's possible, but I don't know how expensive it mm -hmm. is to get a school account. Mm -hmm. All right. Anita, shall we? Any other questions here from anyone else, Sonia? I agree, Sonia. Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're from the same school. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. For You'll the, ask the principal. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you, can, you can always ask. The worst that can happen is he will yeah. say no, right? You're right. He will say yeah. no, but we'll ask. Work. <laughs> it's worth it's worth a trying. Yeah, it's always yeah. worth a try because yeah. you can never lose when you try, right? Yes, right. All right. So that that was um, the activity here. That's the first activity. The second one is a mindfulness awareness technique that we talked about where you can use these techniques, background music, guided mindfulness, breathing techniques, body scan, or sil and silent practice. You can choose one or more. You record your event, whether you do it on Zoom. Jitsi shouldn't take long because, and I think free Zoom is 40 unless they changed it. I'm not sure. Um, there, I think big blue button, I don't know if you can use that one if you have it in your school. Google Meet, it's free, but you cannot record. So maybe you can record using um, a recorder. There's Go Brunch. Uh, you can use this room and record or uh, Microsoft Teams. I don't know what you have available, but you can also yes. use um, Facebook, I think, Messenger, and uh, they have video and audio, right? Or maybe Canva. But Canva only has audio. It doesn't have video recording yet. Yes, there is an option. There is an option for uh, when you're recording a like a presentation kind of a thing. Uh, they can you can also show your own uh, uh, your own face and True. record your stuff. Yeah, that's right. But I'm wondering how that could be done. Um, yeah, I guess. Um, but you know what? There is Nearpod or Edpuzzle, I think, where you can do this live. I think there's a list. We'll go through it in a minute when I go to the slides. So basically, you um, create a class, you record it, and then you upload the MP4 to YouTube. This is what it looks like. I'll go to the slides. We have a list of things there. You start by adding a discussion topic. I wanted to show you something uh, nice that I've added in case this interests you. I'll just write a demo here so we have something. Um, and you go into images if you're looking for an image and you go into browse repository, you can get an image of your choice. What would you like to the AI to what image would you like the AI to get you in Word? Can you describe it? Anyone have anything particular? You can try this on your own time, but I'm going to ask for a mountain. What should I have on the mountain? Just a mountain? Mountain view? 
Okay, let's see what I get. And then you click on search. And, and I didn't get anything. I'm sorry, Nelly. I mean, I, I don't know if, is it my computer? I'm not able to see anything that you're saying. Oh, because I wasn't there. Sorry, my mistake. You're right. Thank you for letting me know. In any case, it's AI. You write what you want to see and you should get the image. That's what I was trying to show here. Let me go back here um, and back to our course and going back, scrolling up. I want to go to the presentation so I can show you, but feel free to ask as I'm doing this. It's always fine. The presentation is down here. Here we go. If you're in um, a presentation mode, it'll be a lot easier for you to view this. But you're not seeing it yet. Now you are. Okay, so actually there's Voki and an explanation for those who didn't quite get it. You log in. You don't have to have an account. Your account will be mapped. These are some of the things that you can do with Voki. All the options and then the text to speech, the voice recording. You can do it by phone, but I don't think anybody would want to do that. And then um, you've got an audio library as well. And you add the name, you save it. You can edit, create another one. If you want to create more than one, that's fine. Have fun. And then you can share it with your friends. That's completely okay. And then there is the list of three favorite techniques using the Voki that you create. And then the synchronous meeting with the mindfulness awareness practice. There's also a TED talk that you might want to watch on unwanted habits and how to get helpful ones. There's the uh, references. And I didn't see what I was looking for, but I think it's in the other video from last week where you have the uh, screen recorders, a list of all the screen recorders that you can use. So there's not much um, in week uh, four, actually just two activities and the journal. So it's getting easier and easier. And hopefully you're spending more time as I've read your journals. I know you are. And I think everybody um, you can share. Hi, Glenda. Good to see you here in Harshita that I didn't see before. Gotcha. I saw you, Anita. I don't know if I mentioned you. So welcome, everyone. Um, you'll get a chance to spend more time with yourself. And I think that's what it's all about. And think of how much time we spend in front of a computer or how much time we spend in social networks or going through our emails or chatting with people, how much time we spend doing that. And when it comes to mindfulness, all it is is five minutes, two minutes, one minute of our time. And we don't often do it. So I'm glad that everybody's trying to do it. And with tiny habits, as Pooja has already bought the book, you do it one tiny habit at a time. And what uh, Fogg suggests is, for example, with mindfulness, is that you don't start if you want to do, let's say you want to do formal mindfulness, but you don't seem to, to be getting there. So what you do is you wake up in the morning, uh, you decide on a time and you go to where you want to do your mindfulness. It could be in another room in the house or somewhere quiet. And you go into that room and you leave the first day. Next day, you go into the room, same room at the same time, and you sit down and then you go out. One tiny habit at a time. And you keep doing that for a while. And then when you've got that set and you are used to going to that room, the next stage is to go into that room again 
sit down and stay there for one minute and then leave. And then the next day you do the same thing. So what you're doing is you're developing a habit and the habit is going into that room. That's all it is, going into that room. And once you get that habit, you get the habit of going into that room and sitting down. Once you get that, and you don't force yourself, you never force yourself. You just have an intention and you want it to become a habit, a good habit. And that's how you do it. One tiny habit at a time. And trust me, I don't know how many people have tried this, but it works. It works when you don't do too much. And that's been documented. We often think of, you know, new year resolutions or we, we want to do something and we decide the night before we're going to do it. The next day we didn't do it. The next day we, in other words, we, we start big instead of starting tiny. That's all it is. Starting small, but doing it, doing the small for a week, two weeks, just a small. Any questions about developing habits and how to really sit down and do it? Do the formal mindfulness. Questions or comments, feel free to ask. All right, so there are no comments. We're going to do a, uh, let's see how much time we have. We've got enough time. So we're going to do a sitting mindfulness practice. So what I'd like you to do, is everybody ready? Just let me know in the chat. Just say yes for why, if you're ready. Looking at the chat. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Ready. All right. Great. All right. Perfect. Okay. Uh, with mindfulness, as I said, you don't need to close your eyes. There are some techniques where you lie down and close your eyes, but you don't have to. And it's better to open your eyes so that your mind gets used to seeing life as it is instead of um, trying to shut it out by closing our eyes. So your eyes are open. Feel your body as you're sitting. Any part that you'd like. It could be where you're sitting, just underneath the area that's touching the chair. Could be the floor. Any contact with the chair. Try not to lean, but if you want to lean at the bottom, that's fine. You can always put something there where there's an arch. And try to find a place where you can sense your breathing. Just look for it. Where am I breathing? It could be even at the palm of your hands, touching your thighs, your lap. It could be on the chair. your belly. Focus on one spot, the back of your head. Focus on one spot where you sense your body breathing. 
If you do not sense any spot, decide on a spot. Decide anywhere on your body and decide that's what I'm going to pay attention to. I'm going to pay attention to my right knee, both knees, to my elbows, any part but one part. And breathe. Take one deep breath. And let it out. And another. And let it out. And another. And let it out. Now breathe normally. And focus on that spot. Every time a thought goes by, look at it and come back to the breath as if you're trying to catch it and bring it in. Think of your thoughts each time they come as butterflies and you have a net and you're catching the butterflies and bringing them in. Now take your right hand and place your right hand over your tummy. And your left hand over your heart. Or if you're more comfortable, put your right hand over your heart and the other one over your tummy. and sense your breathing in and out, out and in.
And then put your hands back on your lap. And catch your thoughts as they come and come back. And feel your whole body breathing out and in, in and out. Right. When you're ready, open your eyes if they're closed and if they're open, come back. Now, I don't know about you, but I could go on for longer. <laughs> So how do you feel? Calm. It's not going to be the same each time. Thank you, Sonia. Some days you may feel like, oh, when is it going to end? And some days you'll feel like, I could go on like this forever. It's never the same. So don't think that you're failing because there's no such thing as failing in mindfulness practice. It's just a practice of coming back to the breath. And if it's hard, it's okay. Just come back to the breath. Let go of the thoughts peacefully and kindly and come back to the breath. That's the practice. Anyone else? have any thoughts or feelings about hands on the lap versus hands on your heart and tummy with one hand with the other hand you can try these and see which one feels better for you how did it feel to put your hands over your heart It felt great. It was uh, as if I felt coming back to myself. This is something that could be done in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Thank you. you know, whenever. You. Yes. Go ahead. Rafaela writes alive. Alive. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful because that's what mindfulness is. It's coming awake, waking up. That's what John Gabbett said. He has a book on uh, waking up. People often think that mindfulness is about, um, or, you know, meditating and going to sleep. <laughs> and it's just the opposite. It's waking up. Anyone else? Hashita writes a realization of self. Yes, thank you. Yes, we're, we're, yes, and we need this, don't we, Hashita? We need to be reminded that we are flesh, that, you know, it's not just our brains that keep moving on automatic pilot. There's a body that um, is so important because that's how we get around. We get around with our body and not with our thoughts that are not really real. Anyone else want to share? Sometimes it's hard to share after a mindfulness um, practice because um, we feel as if, I, I don't know, as if we're in another, another dimension, 
another place, somewhere we're not familiar with, uh, somewhere that we don't visit often. But that's what we do in mindfulness. We visit ourselves for a change. And I think that's, um, that's one of the takeaways that I have gotten from mindfulness, that it allows me to visit Nelly every once in a while, for real, not just uh, in an imaginary way, because that's what you're giving yourself. You're giving yourself, as Harshita said, yourself. And Rafaela writes that uh, her daughter was uh, with her and she doesn't understand English, so it was interesting. <laughs> Did she do the mindfulness? Yeah, I guess. Actually, she writes, my daughter was, just a second, uh, my daughter is in the chat. I'm not looking at the chat, sorry. Uh -huh. um, who said this? Rafaela. Ah, oh, Rafaela. Um, my daughter was little disturbing while trying to do practice with me anyway. Uh, thank you for mentioning that. I was going to talk about that. Um, the fact that when we do mindfulness, guided mindfulness or not guided mindfulness, and there's noise, someone comes into the room or there's background sound or a little girl or a baby cries or something's happening outside when we do the mindfulness to use that. That's an opportunity to use that as part of your practice. So if your daughter is there and um, maybe she's talking to you, whatever, you, you will be more with her if you go back to the breathing, you know, listen to her voice and go back to the breathing. She, she will feel that. And the connection, you, you'll sense what the connection is like. It'll connect the two of you in ways that um, you will find interesting. So if there's noise or anything, use that in your practice. Don't try to um, be upset by it or to, you know, resist it. The idea is not to resist reality. And that is reality. Mindfulness is about learning to accept reality and working with it instead of working against uh, what we have what is there in front of us that we cannot control. Anyone else? I'm looking at the chat to see if there's any, anything else. Um, oh, that's interesting. I fully understand you, which is why I have these. These are noise. <laughs> you know, they're usually used by factory workers. I have them. In case anybody does noisy things, I'm one of the most sensitive people to noise. And I have done mindfulness with noise. It's an amazing practice where you're listening to horrible noise, Rafaela, and you're doing mindfulness. And you go into the noise. And it's amazing that when you do mindfulness and you do it with noise, you, you learn about the different parts of the noise and it becomes beautiful. But this could only be done with mindfulness. I, I use my headset when I'm not doing mindfulness and there's noise. <laughs> but um, that's great practice because there's, there's uncontrollable noise around us as well. So uh, <laughs> yeah, use whatever is there and go into it. Go into it and come back to the breath. Being with whatever it is, that's mindfulness. And I'm glad you're all here. And I'm looking forward to learning more with and from you and the work that you will be doing. If you can't find someone, then um, you could do it, as I said, with your family members and just record yourself as you do it. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nelly.